first? James? I'd say buy art. That's probably the easiest <laughs> thing. Uh, th I think that the whole problem that we've, we've realized is that reliance on the state uh, and artists is not really <coughs> the way to go. You can't really rely on tourism or, or at least artwork made in, in, in respect to tourism, open up a cafe or, 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 or raise the profile of an area. But any commissioned art isn't really the point. I think the point is you need to go out and buy it. I mean, the artists need the money. That's, that's, the, that's the be all and end all. And uh, okay, a lot of the stuff you won't like, but if there is something you do like, I'm not saying you, you should just go and buy it, but you're buying that person's artwork will, will be the start of that process of people being whittled down. You know, the amount of art and the amount of artists being made whittled down to then find a, a measure of uh, quality that the art scene can uh, really uh, make its name from um, in terms of quality. So, yeah, I just say, yeah, buy art, buy art, yeah. If you really want to talk about tourists, I, I, I'm also lobbying the Penang Port Commission. Uh, the Penang Port has lots of facilities by the pier side, by Swetterham Pier. 1.2 million cruise ship tourists come in through there. And you know what they first see when they get land there? dilapidated warehouses mm -hmm. right by the pier. It's such a sad thing. And if you do up those space, I'm, I'm lobbying them, do up those space, all right? You have artists, galleries, studios. Those are the tourists who can come out, see something that they like, and carry that painting up to their ship. You don't even have to take a taxi, all right? <laughs> so I'm also lobbying for that space. Open it up, make it happening. Right? 1.2 million tourists. Those tourists can stay there and, and go back on the ship <laughs> after they do that. Uh, Dr. Doris, what's that one thing you think I agree with just buy from the local artist. From the local artist. Buy from the local artist. It's small. It doesn't matter. It's cheap. It doesn't matter. It's better than putting posters and prints on the wall. And because I'm leaving by mid of July and you ask uh, what can everybody of us do, I have the dream that when I'm back in Germany now for good, what is very sad, at least I have one idea to try to make an either an art exchange or art in residency, whatever, because if you don't expose artists to different cultures, uh, they will they will have a gap and they can only learn and you can only involve uh, and, and uh, raise your, your skills by learning that you are different and the other culture is different and then how to cope with it and bringing it into arts again. So this is what I'm dream for and I will work on that. <laughs> um, if you can't afford to buy, I think some of us can't afford to buy. But I, an, another currency I think we have is actually to give attention to our friend's work. You know, that doesn't cost you anything. You can write about your friend's exhibition or book or just by talking about our peers' uh, work is a great thing to do, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Just a round of applause for all our panelists. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to open the floor to some questions. We have just half an hour. Yeah, just nice. Half an hour to take some questions. Uh, anything you'd like to ask any of the panelists here? Um, I'll walk around and pass the mic over because there's, there's only four here. Anyone who'd like to ask any questions? Okay, so I'm not really... Uh, I'm not exposed to art. I'm not really... I don't really... I've just started looking at art in Penang. Uh, this is for everyone. So. Um, the thing is, I didn't realize that the artists in Penang are controlled. Controlled. Yeah. I didn't realize that they are controlled, and I didn't realize that there is a direction that they're told to take with their work. So with that, and also the fact that um, the art scene here is booming quite rapidly, uh, is it authentic still, the art that we have in Penang? Not all are controlled. Of course, a lot of art that went up walls are, are on their own, uh, graffiti in that sense. All right? But I was very upset when I hear that uh, cats are welcome, not dogs, <laughs> on the wall, because it's sensitive to Muslims, which is total nonsense. 
All right. So, so yes, we do have, and, and we do have to fight such, such things. And I, I think people need to speak out. All right. In, in that sense, Muslim needs to speak out. Uh, because ultimately, that was used as an excuse to impede, to control. All right. uh, uh, because non-Muslim, when they speak out, they, you, you, you draw a lot of flags. Yeah. All right. So you need Muslim to speak out, man. I think, yeah, control is a bit of a, a strong word. They're not controlled, forced, controlled. Cause there's many different types of it. I mean, censorship is one form. But luckily in Penang, I mean, Penang made its name for itself for being actually relatively free of censorship throughout the whole, you know, nine years previously. OK, last year's GTF. Oops. Last year's GTF was a bit of a... Uh, uh, bit of a spanner in that in that sort of consistent works but I mean under uh, Chief Minister Lim Guan Eng Penang was seen as as that's one of the big draw for artists the idea that under that leadership there'd be very little said about any work that they put up on the walls or, or or any issues they want to you know unless you're inciting violence then it was pretty much good to go um, so I, I wouldn't say it, control is very strong. I mean, if you have censorship, that's a form of control. You have self-censorship as well. So you also have then maybe your own beliefs that, that might steer you away from looking at a, an issue objectively if you want to put some meaning in your art. Um, also then the idea of, is if you really want to sell your art and not really stick to what you want to do, then that's another form of self-censorship, right? And if you want to just make it into something that somebody really, really, really wants. And then there's also commissions, so that's also a kind of a form of control. I mean, you just can't do what you want. When the customer wants a dog and you paint a cat, maybe, it's not really the, the, the right thing, but um, you can't do that, right? So in terms of control, it's very, you know, it's a kind of wishy-washy idea, but there is a sort of slight control there. Um, and in terms of canvas art, actually what you'll find in all the exhibitions that are constantly going on around Penang is local artists. And I think I agree with, with uh, Lee Kai, Ernest, for example, would be deemed a local artist. I mean, there are a lot of them around um, from different parts of the world. You know, uh, the quality is good. Um, what they explore is, is actually quite free um, because it's not public, because it is within you know, some walls and it is on canvas. So, you know, I don't think there's, there's this, maybe as you imagine it, this fist that's kind of steering everybody around. In some respects, they are all free. But they can only be the freest form of themselves or version of themselves when they produce something which is of a quality that you would like, that you would buy that, that piece, you know. They need the people to buy that work, their canvas work, their exhibited work, in order to keep on doing that exhibited work. And the exhibited work is what makes an artist, not the commissions that they do, not the walls that they paint on, or the designs they do for a company, or the this or that and the other. Um, maybe Penang is different in the fact that a lot of the artists get that kind of work. Even though there's quite a big pool of them, a lot of the artists make their money from commission pieces, which a lot of artists in the, let's say, in the Western world don't do because any company has their design team. You know, companies here are a lot smaller. There's a lot more entrepreneurial businesses, a lot of thin uh, businesses that can then outsource something like a design or something on a wall or a poster or a plaque. You know, they can outsource that to a local artist and they've got loads to choose from so they can choose a different style. Um, but the only thing is, is that, you know, Art in Penang, canvas art, exhi exhibited art has always been quite free. Performance art, music, dance, theatre uh, has been well quite free, freer than elsewhere in Malaysia for sure. Uh, there are events here that weren't even allowed to be done in Singapore that happened in previous years. So in that respect, there is a lot of freedom. But for an artist to be free, he needs to sell his, his, his free art, his exhibited art, the art that he wants to be known for. If he doesn't sell that, it doesn't matter the amount of commissions that he, he does. You know, he'll never be able to break out of that commission cycle where each commission pays for all his life and then maybe he can save up to make an exhibition because that costs money, especially if you want to put on some food and wine. But, you know, canvas is expensive. Frames, good quality frames, stretches, they're expensive. Uh, and if you want to really put on an ex exhibition and you want to put some music in there, maybe you want to rent a DJ, I mean, it just all adds up, adds up, adds up, adds up, adds up. 
And unfortunately, commission pieces don't pay for that because they pay for their life. So it's the, it's the money they make from actually their, their exhibited artwork that will pay for the next exhibit, you know what I mean? So there is freedom. And, it, and, and there's more freedom in the exhibited canvas works that you'll find. James, there is freedom, yet there is control. Uh, in the form of conditioning, uh, one thing that I've noticed and I realized, uh, especially in the non-Muslim art community, there are a lot of self-censorship. That may explain why Penang artists are doing same old, same old, Street scene, streetscapes. Name me an artist, a prominent artist, uh, artwork that is done by non Muslims that depicts a pig. Zuna is daring to do a pig. All right? I tell you, a lot of Chinese artists dare not do pigs because I don't want to offend the sensitivity. I think Fanton has done pig before, but it's for a very small consumption. <laughs> Whether it's a perceived control or it's just them looking at their own shadow and, and, and being afraid. Or, uh, but I was very happy some years back when I went to the uh, Islamic Museum. Mm -hmm. They had a 50th Malaysian 50th uh, Merdeka, 50th anniversary in Merdeka uh, celebration, and there was a huge art exhibition and their works in exhibited. And I was very happy to see Malay artists painting dragons and pigs and stuff without problem in the Islamic Museum. Uh, perhaps we have to help liberate non-Muslims' mind mm -hmm. all right, of that perceived control, all right, of, 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 of being more passionate of really want to show what they want to show than, than doing a lot of self-censorship.